So, the story today from IP Watchdog. Eileen McDermott writes, Copyright Office denies registration to award-winning work made with Midjourney. It's this image shown here. As the office described in its March guidance, when an AI technology receives solely a prompt from a human and produces complex written, visual, or musical works in response, the traditional elements of authorship are determined and executed by the technology, not the human user. That's a really important sentence. This is a borderline case. This is a case where the author seems to have tried a lot to get past the scrutiny of the copyright board and the copyright registrar and the copyright office and tried to get a AI generated work copyright protected because why why wouldn't you want your award winning work to be copyright protect, then you own something and that ownership is something you can enforce and that ownership then has value. That value could be high. This was an award-winning work. So this is a really critical paragraph to how things are going to happen in the law, in copyright law, going forward in the U.S. And I think maybe we should go over that one again. The office says... As the office described in its March guidance, which means a previous document they released in March, when an AI technology, like Midjourney, receives solely a prompt from a human, imagine a thing, and it can be a really complex thing that you then describe. It could be hundreds of words. Solely a prompt from a human and produces complex written visual or musical works in response such as this image that's on the screen here. The traditional elements of authorship. Authorship is critical to copyright ownership and copyright protection. The traditional elements that make up authorship are determined and executed by the technology and not the user. Yes, the thing gets a prompt. We're going to go over that in great detail. So if, if that was enough for you, I understand that now you know you still can't copyright AI work. So, you know, close it down, everybody. We're done. You still can't copyright AI-generated works. There's an article here, and I don't want to just read Ms. McDermott's article, so we're going to look at the decision. So, when you register a copyright, the Copyright Office can, on its own, challenge your copyright ability, challenge your copyright registration, ask for more information. Sometimes there's letters back and forth. So this is from the Copyright Review Board. This is to Tamara Pester, and this is the second request. This is on Pester's second request for reconsideration for refusal to register Théâtre d'Opera Spatial, Opera, Spatial Opera Theater, Theater, Theater of Opera Spatial, I don't know. That's the title of the work that I can't pronounce. Dear Ms. Pester, the review board of the United States Copyright Office has considered Jason M. Allen, so that's our author, Mr. Allen's second request for reconsideration of the office's refusal to register a two-dimensional artwork titled Théâtre d'Opera Spatial, the work. After reviewing the application, the deposit copy, and relevant correspondence, along with the arguments in the second request for reconsideration, the board affirms the registration program's denial of registration. The board finds that the work contains more than a small or de minimis amount of content generated by AI. Okay, so first, take some notes here. A de minimis amount of AI-generated content is okay, seemingly based on what they just said here. So you can use a little bit of AI, but not a lot. I don't know where that line is, so let's keep reading. And this content must therefore be disclaimed in an application for registration. So we also now know you must disclaim what is not generated by a human or what is generated by an AI. Because Mr. Allen is unwilling that's keyword here, unwilling to disclaim the AI-generated material, the work cannot be registered as submitted. So what do we know about copyright law already that you could maybe have a feel for that you don't own everything, right? You own what you create. You don't own 
the Senna Fair. You can't prevent fair uses. Uh, you can't prevent de minimis uses. You can make de minimis uses. You can make fair uses, but you don't own that underlying material. So apply that to this image, knowing that some major part of it is generated by an AI after a prompt, and then something was done to it afterward. What does the author own? Well, the author would own whatever was authored by a human, and they're saying he's unwilling to disclaim what was generated by the AI and therefore claim what was generated by a human. So right there, we can stop again. And this is not a case that's going to keep coming up if you care, if you are careful, and if you pay attention to what you can register and what you can't register. If everybody thinks there's this gold rush to just copyright everything, they're just going to make a bunch of prompts. It's going to be like trademarks, and it's going to be like domain names. That's not how copyright works, and it's never been how copyright works. You can't just go and have a computer make a bunch of images and then say, I've copyrighted everything. You can't just go and have a computer make a bunch of music Remember there was a random music generator or something that generated every single copyrightable melody and then claimed that since they had all been copyrighted by this one person who submitted a hard drive and managed to get it all registered with the copyright office, that that meant that their disclaimer that these were all released into the public domain meant that there's no more copyrightability of eight-note ostinatos. No, it didn't, didn't work that way either. Uh, they never would have had a copyright in the first place, and that would never have been the product of human authorship. And you get it. It's this again. So we're we're actually being really consistent in copyright law, saying that you can copyright things that are minimally creative, but it has to be generated by a human, not an AI. And when you register your copyright, then you have to disclaim what you did not generate. Like, do you guys remember a few weeks ago, months ago, uh, Richard Leibowitz claimed one of my videos, and I then in response copyright registered that video so that I would be able to sue if I had to. Well, they denied my copyright registration because I used the wrong form. I used the single application, which means that I created that video myself and own all the content in it. And I don't own this stuff. I don't own this literal document in front of you here. That's a court document. It's not mine. And I didn't disclaim it. So they denied my copyright registration as they should have. Now I can go and use the not single application, the $65 form, and I can disclaim it and get a copyright. It'll be fine. It was more of a preemptive thing in case, in case there was more coming down the line. So here's the description of the work. A two-dimensional artwork reproduced below. Great. That's, that's hey, a picture's worth a thousand words, but uh, that doesn't really help me describe it to you. If you're not looking at a screen... If you're listening to this, it is a kind of interesting image with a inside view in a large dark ballroom looking out a large round, almost perfectly round, sort of portal-like window. There's sort of uh, etchings adorning the walls, indistinguishable etchings that have kind of a characteristic of like a gold or a uh, you know, something that looks fancy. In the medium foreground, there are three figures, and there's a couple figures on the side as well in the medium foreground that make it seem like you're in some sort of um, palace of some kind. But then true to AI, kind of the the far depth of the image it just sort of dissolves into a cityscape of some kind. And then the portal is part of that cityscape, not really part of the palace wall, but then it is in kind of an Escher-like way. And then off to one side just seems to be like clutter, like inside the palace. Off to the right seems to be like clutter inside the palace. 
And so it's a really weird combination of inside a palace and then looking out into a city like Scape with a big portal thing. But are you inside or are you outside or what are you looking at? Your brain can't really figure it out. And that makes it kind of an interesting image. Very true to AI, though. Once you look into the details, it doesn't really make any sense. And it's not something I'd put on my wall because I put things on my wall that mean things, not just look cool. On September 21st, 2022, Mr. Allen filed an application to register a two-dimensional artwork claimed in the work. While Mr. Allen did not disclose in his application that the work was created using an AI system, so here's some mistakes that are being made. Disclose, disclose, disclose. You want to disclose up front and then legal things happen. The office became aware of the work because it had garnered national attention for being the first AI-generated image to win the 2022 Colorado State Fair's annual fine art annual fine art competition. First AI-generated image to win an well, this Colorado art competition. It was known to the office that AI-generated material contributed to the work. The examiner assigned to the application requested additional information about Mr. Allen's use of MidJourney, a text-to-picture artificial intelligence service, in the creation of the work. In response, Mr. Allen provided an explanation of his process, stating, this is important, here's what he did. He input numerous revisions and text prompts at least 624 times to arrive at the initial version of the image. Now, what's another thing that we know about copyright? If I spend 624 hours making my own... Oh, Mickey Mouse is a bad example because it's going to come off a of copyright. Uh, making my own, uh, what's, all, what's copyrightable? Making my own uh, Rick from Rick and Morty. That's not mine just because I put 624 hours into making my own Rick. That's a copyrighted character that belongs to somebody. And I can't just go make a derivative work without permission. So I can make it and I can own it in the sense that I can possess the thing I made. I can own it in the possessory sense. But I don't own I don't own a thing that's free and clear of copyright infringement, and I don't own a copyright protected thing because it's an unauthorized derivative work. Likewise, just because you submitted 624 text prompts to get the perfect image does not mean that you made that image. The amount of time or the amount of effort doesn't weigh in on whether it gets copyright protection. Whether it gets copyright protection is a product of whether it's the product of human authorship fixing something in a tangible medium of expression, etc., uh, etc., etc. Et something of minimal creativity, of, hu of human authorship. So you're not going to get around it by saying, I worked really hard on asking the AI to generate this image. He further explained that after Midjourney produced the initial version of the work, he then used Adobe Photoshop to remove flaws and create new visual content and used Gigapixel AI to upscale the image, increasing its resolution and size. Okay, that, that last part of the sentence there used Gigapixel AI to upscale the image, increasing its resolution and size. That's that minimal use of AI that I think would not contribute to the rejection of a copyright registration if you disclosed it. Whatever the upscaling added, if, if it was a zoom out or something, maybe, but if you're just taking a HD image and making it Ultra HD or 2K image, making it 4K, etc. That's not really adding anything creative. It's not, you're not making any copyright claim for the, I don't know, higher resolution. You can still claim a copyright on the higher resolution image because the underlying image is still the product of your human authorship. So the Gigapixel AI thing alone the upscaling, I don't think that invalidates anything. 
So, so far, we're doing pretty good here. You just have to disclose what you use. It has to be a minimal use of AI, and you're fine. What you can't do is lie to the Copyright Office. As a result of these disclosures, the examiner requested that the features of the work generated by Midjourney be excluded from the copyright claim. Mr. Allen declined the examiner's request and reasserted his claim to copyright in the features of the work produced by the AI system. This is critical. He declined the examiner's request to disclaim. He then claimed the features produced by the AI. The office refused to register the claim because the deposit for the work did not fix only Mr. Allen's alleged authorship. So remember, fixation in a tangible medium of expression. But instead included inextricably merged, inseparable contributions from both Mid-Allen. Mid-Allen and Mr. Journey. <laughs> from both Mr. Allen and Mid-Journey. On January 24th, Mr. Allen, not Mr. Journey, requested that the office reconsider its initial refusal to register the work, arguing that the examiner had misapplied the human authorship requirement and that public policy favored registration. So a new, new argument here. But that's just calling for public policy. What is the argument for public policy? After reviewing the work in light of the points raised, the office reevaluated the claims and again concluded the work could not be registered without limiting the claim to only the copyrightable authorship Mr. Allen himself contributed to the work. I'm going to bet that his contribution was the de minimis part and the AI's contribution was the de maximis part. The office explained that the image generated by Midjourney that formed the initial basis for the work is not an original work of authorship protected by copyright. The office accepted Mr. Allen's claim that human-authored visual edits made with Adobe Photoshop contained sufficient amount of original authorship to be registered. However, the office explained that the features generated by Midjourney and Gigapixel AI must be excluded as non-human authorship because he sought to register the entire work and because he refused to disclaim the portions attributable to the AI the office could not register the claim. In a letter submitted July 12th, 2023, Mr. Allen requested the office reconsider for a second time. The second request presented several arguments. First, he argued in finding that the image generated by Midjourney lacks human authorship essential for copyright protection, the office ignored the essential element of human creativity required to create a work using Midjourney. So finally... Finally, he's trying to say it's hard work, it's copyrightable work to write prompts for mid-journey. Now, that's, I, it's not impossible that your prompts are copyrightable. I don't think anyone is saying your prompts can't be copyrightable. They're going to have to rise above a de minimis level of creativity. And they're going to have to be non-functional because copyright doesn't protect functional things that's patent so let's say you wrote a 500 word story as your prompt yes i'm sure that there is something copyrightable in your story there that doesn't mean nobody else can write a story with a prompt it just can't be your story you get it and the output is all over the place it could be the same with different prompts. Who knows? So, good luck. Mr. Allen argued that his creative input into Midjourney, which included entering a series of prompts, what did I just say? Adjusting the scene, selecting portions to focus on, and dictating the tone of the image is on par with that expressed by other types of artists and capable of copyright protection. He further contended that the fair use doctrine would allow for registration of the work. That's a new one. Have we ever heard anyone say that fair use allows for registration of an otherwise unregisterable work? Okay. Would allow for registration because it allows for transformative uses of copyrighted material. Okay, so, okay. Oh, I get it. Um, there's an attack on AI-generated 
uh, well, not AI generated. There's an attack on AI generators, the AIs themselves, the companies that feed them data. They feed them data from uh, copyright protected images that aren't supposed to be used that way. That now there's a fight going on whether if they use my images in Mid Journey and Mid Journey makes something. Does that mean it contains, is a derivative work of my thing? Is it an unauthorized derivative? Did they commit copyright infringement? Do they owe me licensing fees? Or is it a transformative fair use? And like, okay, that's a whole other argument to have, but no one is saying that this is not copyrightable because Midjourney might have stolen artwork. No, I, I think they're saying it's not copyrightable because it's not human authored. So, great argument, but you're arguing a different case. Mr. Allen argued that in this case, the underlying AI-generated work merely constitutes raw material, which Mr. Allen has transformed through his artistic contributions. Okay, so I think I had said before that you need to make the argument that, like, AI is the brush, and you are the artist making the strokes. And I didn't see it in prompts. I don't think prompts are... The, you're the artist and 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 the, using the brush and the AI is the brush. I think it's more like uh, the AI can be used to generate, uh, you know, a realistic looking rusty wall or something, you know, rusty metal wall in a warehouse or something like for a video game. And you just like sort of paint it on. I think, you know, your choice in putting a rusty wall there is on some level copyright protected, not all not all by itself, but as part of a larger work. Uh, yeah. So it's like the beginning of that argument, I think. Therefore, regardless of whether the underlying AI-generated work is eligible for copyright registration, the entire work in the form submitted to the Copyright Office should be accepted. Uh, that's not how it works. <laughs> That's, that's not how it works. You can't gain ownership of an entire copyright, like, like a hundred percent copyright protection because you contributed some percentage to the work. I, I don't gain ownership of the copyright review board's opinion because I spent an hour reviewing it on my show. That's not how it works. Next, he asserted that by refusing to register content generated by Midjourney and others, the office is placing a value judgment on the utility of various tools and that denial of copyright protection for the output of such tools would result in a void of ownership. Finally, he objected to the office's registration requirements for works containing AI-generated content, stating that requiring creators to list each tool and the proportion of the work created with the tool would have a burdensome effect if enforced uniformly. Um, it, wh wh what does he mean by uniform enforcement, right? Of course, the Copyright Office thinks it's enforcing this very uniformly, like any AI-generated artwork gets this enforcement. And he's saying, no, 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 the, 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 the sculptor didn't tell you he used a trowel. Dude, is it a smart trowel? <laughs> does it do the sculpting for you? So tell me this, if you put a trowel in one of those robots that builds cars and you hooked it up to Mid Journey and Mid Journey made a sculpture out of a trowel and, and I guess some cement or whatever you make sculptures out of like that, some mud, whatever, I don't know, I'm not a sculptor. You're telling me you think that that's copyrightable? No. No, that's the same thing as this. That's AI-generated artwork. Just because it's in a software form, just because it's a website or a Discord DM, doesn't matter. We are applying the elements of authorship, the traditional elements, the hundreds of years old, in the 250-year-old U.S. Constitution. Well, yeah, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 8. Not an amendment that this has been discussed before. It just hasn't been applied to AI. Speaking of that discussion, 
After carefully examining the work and considering the arguments made in the first and second request, the board finds the work contains more than a de minimis amount of AI-generated content, which must be disclaimed. We read this before. He's refused. The Copyright Act protects and the office registers original works of authorship fixed in any tangible medium of expression. Courts have interpreted the statutory phrase works of authorship to require human creation of the work. Human authorship is a bedrock requirement of copyright in affirming the office's refusal to register a work autonomously created by AI. For this reason, courts have uniformly rejected attempts to protect the creations of non-humans through copyright. For example, the Ninth Circuit held that a book containing the words authored by non-human spiritual beings can only gain copyright protection if there is human selection and arrangement of the revelations. Some element of human creativity must have occurred in order for the book to be copyrightable because it is not creations of divine beings that copyright laws were intended to protect. Similarly, where is he? Where is he? We got to get him out. We got to get him out. You know we have to do it. Similarly. Come on. Come on, uh, NVIDIA. You got him. Get him back in here, NVIDIA. <laughs> this is this is a person, NVIDIA. Similarly. <laughs> I love that NVIDIA is struggling with this. Similarly. <laughs> Put him in front of me. Give him my hat. What happens to a monkey with a hat? <laughs> Similarly, a monkey cannot register a copyright in photos. It captures with a camera because the Copyright Act refers unto an author's children, widow, grandchildren, and widower. Terms that all imply humanity <laughs> and necessarily exclude animals from Naruto v. Slater. That's going on the wall as soon as I get a chance to get it framed. Most recently in Thaler v. Perlmutter, we just went over this. By its plain text, the 1976 Act requires a copyrightable work to have an originator with the capacity for intellectual, creative, or artistic labor. There's a great phrase for you. A copyrightable work must have an originator with the capacity for intellectual, creative, or artistic labor. Must that originator be a human being to claim copyright protection? The answer is yes. Because copyright protection is only available for the creations of human authors, the office will refuse to register a copyright claim if it determines that a human did not create the work. When analyzing AI-generated material, the office must determine when a human user can be considered the creator of AI-generated output. In March 2023, the office provided public guidance on registration of works created by a generative AI system. I was not aware of this. We'll have to look at that. The guidance explained that in considering an application for registration, the office will ask whether the work is basically one of human authorship, with a computer or other device merely being an assisting instrument, or whether the traditional elements of authorship in the work, literary, artistic, or musical expression, or elements of selection, arrangement, etc., were actually conceived and executed not by man, but by a machine. This analysis will be necessarily case by case because it will depend on the circumstances, particularly how the AI tool operates and how it was used to create the final work. If all of a work's traditional elements of authorship were produced by a machine, the work lacks human authorship and the office will not register it. If, however, a work containing AI-generated material also contains sufficient human authorship to support a claim to copyright, then the office will register the human's contributions. In such cases, the applicant must disclose the AI-generated content that is more than de minimis. Applicants may disclose and exclude such material by placing a brief description of the AI-generated content in the Limitation of Claims section on the registration application. They even tell you where to put it. They tell you where to go. The description may be as brief and generic as including a description of content generated by artificial intelligence. 
Applicants may provide additional information in the Note to the Copyright Office or Note to CO field in the online application. Applicants are not required to list the AI tools used in the creation of the work. Before turning to its analysis of the work, the board notes the office has previously considered the scope of copyright protection of images generated through the use of the tool used by Mr. Allen, the generative AI system MidJourney. Last year, the Office of Registration Policy and Practice initiated cancellation proceedings for a graphic novel containing images generated by MidJourney. In its final decision, reissuing the registration certificate with exclusions, the office explained its understanding of how the MidJourney service functions and the relevant analysis under copyright law. In examining the work here, the board applies its knowledge of MidJourney and MidJourney's description of its own service, of which the office takes administrative notice. Analysis. Because the work here contains AI-generated material, the board starts with an analysis of the circumstances of the work's creation, including Mr. Allen's use of an AI tool. According to Mr. Allen, the work was created by, one, initially generating an image using mid-journey, two, using Photoshop to beautify and adjust various cosmetic details slash flaws slash artifacts, etc. in the mid-journey image and three, upscaling the image using Gigapixel AI. After considering the application, the deposit, and Mr. Allen's correspondence, the board concludes the work does contain more than a de minimis amount that must be disclaimed, and he refused to disclaim. Okay. The board concludes that the mid-journey image, which remains in substantial form in the final work, is not the product of human authorship. In reaching that conclusion, the board does not decide whether Mr. Allen's adjustments in Photoshop would be copyrightable on their own, because the board lacks sufficient information to make that determination. The board also does not consider Mr. Allen's use of Gigapixel AI, because he concedes that Gigapixel AI doesn't introduce new original elements into the image, and that the enlargement process undertaken by Gigapixel does not equate to authorship. Okay, what did we say? Here you go. I don't know how much more we can zoom in here. This is really telling. So these works, to me, it is abundantly clear that yes, the final work has too much AI input into it. So very nice that Mr. Allen did all the work beautifying and clarifying the somewhat blurry image that Midjourney appears to have created on the left. But it's still a foundation based on that Midjourney image. So yeah, it's great that he used it as a foundation. And it's probably great that he can go into Photoshop and, you know, output his layers of what he did to it, show differences or something, and disclaim what he did. He can disclaim the image on the left and claim the image on the right, and I'll have the right to use the image on the left and probably not use the right image on the right. Like, it's that might actually work. So why he tried to work around it, I don't know. Maybe he didn't watch my videos. In his second request, Mr. Allen asserts a number of arguments in support of his claim. He argues that his use of mid-journey allows him to claim authorship in the image generated by the service because he provided creative input when he entered a series of prompts, adjusted the scene, selected portions to focus on, and dictated the tone of the image. As explained in his correspondence, Mr. Allen created a text prompt that began with a big-picture description that focused on the overall subject of the piece... He then added a second big-picture description to the prompt text as a way of instructing the software that Mr. Allen is combining two ideas. Next, he added the overall image's genre and category, certain professional artistic terms which direct the tone of the piece, how lifelike Mr. Allen wanted the piece to appear, a description of how colors should be used, a description to further define the composition, terms about what style, era, the artwork should depict, and a writing technique that Mr. Allen has established from extensive testing that would make the image pop. He then appended the prompt with various parameters which further instructed the software to develop the image, resulting in a final text prompt that was executed into MidJourney to complete the process, and resulted in the creation of the MidJourney image above. 
guys, if I go to a painter and I say, I want you to paint in this style and I want you to use this brush and I want you to use this paint and I want you to use this color and I want you to dilute your paint this way and I want you to make your brush strokes this way and I want you to start, uh, you know, in the right corner and go down to the left corner and I want you to go up to the right, and I, et cetera, et cetera. Am I the author? No. You can tell an artist to create something for you and maybe somewhere in there is a copyrightable something or other but what the artist creates is not yours automatically maybe a work for hire or something but let's take those secondary cases where you actively did something out of it if you're just talking about the default case you don't own anything the artist does and maybe he's giving you or she's giving you or you're buying the painting that you've made the description of, you know, you, you go to the, you go to an artist and you say, make me an image of this. And I want, you know, to buy a copy of that image from you. You know, that's what you pay for. And they still own the image. It's not your image. I guess this is far into some people. That's why I'm here. In the board's view, Mr. Allen's actions, as described, do not make him the author of the Midjourney image because his sole contribution to the Midjourney image was inputting the text prompt that produced it. Although Mr. Allen describes inputting numerous revisions and text prompts 624 times before producing the Midjourney image above, the steps in that process were ultimately dependent on how the Midjourney system processed Mr. Allen's prompts. According to documentation, prompts influence what the system generates and are interpreted by Midjourney and compared to its training data. As the office has explained, Midjourney does not interpret prompts as specific instructions to create a particular expressive result because Midjourney does not understand grammar, sentence structure, or words like humans. It is the office's understanding that because Midjourney does not treat text prompts as direct instructions, users may need to attempt hundreds of iterations before landing upon an image they find satisfactory. This appears to be the case for Mr. Allen, who experimented with over 600 prompts before he selected and cropped out one acceptable panel out of four potential images after hundreds were previously generated. As the office described in its March guidance, when an AI technology receives solely a prompt from a human and produces complex works, the traditional elements of authorship are determined and executed by the technology, not the human author. And because the authorship in the mid-journey image is more than de minimis, he needs to exclude it, and he didn't. We got that part. The board finds that Mr. Allen's remaining arguments regarding elements of authorship in the work are unpersuasive. First, he argues that the office's position ignores the essential element of human creativity required to create a work using the Midjourney program, and that his creative choices in operating Midjourney make him the author of the resulting output. The board acknowledges that the process of prompting can involve creativity. After all, some prompts may be sufficiently creative to be protected by copyright themselves as literary works. But that does not mean that providing text prompts to Midjourney actually forms the generated images. These are two different things. Instead, Mr. Allen is closer to the plaintiff in Kelly v. Chicago Park District who sought to claim a copyright in a living garden. In that case, the court rejected the authorship claim because, as is true here, the plaintiff's actions did not amount to creative control of the claimed elements of the work. As the Seventh Circuit further explained, while copyright's prerequisites of authorship and fixation are broadly defined, the law must have some limits. Second, the board rejects Mr. Allen's policy argument that denying copyright protection to AI-generated material leaves a void of ownership. The Constitution and the Copyright Act define the works that are entitled to copyright protection to expressly exclude certain subject matter. To be copyrightable, a work must qualify as an original work of authorship, which excludes works produced by non-humans. The fact that not all works will satisfy this standard does not create a troubling void of ownership. The office administers the copyright laws as enacted by Congress and cannot exceed the bounds set by Congress and the Constitution. Third, 
The board rejects Mr. Allen's argument that requiring AI-generated material to be excluded from the application for the work improperly places a value judgment on the utility of tools. The disclosure of AI-generated material is information regarded by the Register of Copyrights as bearing upon the preparation or identification of the work or the existence, ownership, or duration of the copyright. As the office's guidance on works containing AI-generated material explained, the Copyright Act permits the Register to identify such information and require its disclosure in copyright applications. This requirement is not a value judgment, it is a recognition of the fact that human authorship is a bedrock requirement of copyright. Fourth, the board rejects Mr. Allen's suggestion that the doctrine of fair use is relevant to determination of whether a work is copyrightable. Fair use is a legal doctrine that permits the unauthorized use of copyright-protected works in certain circumstances. It does not address copyrightability, but rather use. To the extent Mr. Allen argues by analogy that his visual edits are transformative and thus copyrightable, the board agrees that human-authored modifications of AI-generated material may be protected by copyright. A work containing AI-generated material will also contain sufficient human authorship to support a copyright claim, because a human author may select, arrange, or modify AI-generated material in a sufficiently creative way. But the office cannot register Mr. Allen's human contributions if he does not limit his claim with respect to the AI-generated material. Again, it's his refusal to explain and disclaim what is AI-generated and what is human-generated. And he wants to own the whole thing, including the AI-generated part, and he can't have that. Finally, the board dismisses Mr. Allen's argument that requiring creators to list each tool and the proportion of the work created with the tool would have a burdensome effect. The office does not require a detailed disclosure of the specific identity and creative process behind the AI-generated material in a work. The office's guidance merely requires applicants to provide a brief statement in the application, such as the text generated by artificial intelligence. The office does not intend this requirement to be burdensome, and it does not call for a detailed list of the tools used or the precise proportions of the work that were created by each one. For the foregoing reasons, the Review Board of the United States Copyright Office affirms the refusal to register the copyright claim in the work. And that is Suzanne Wilson, General Counsel and Associate Register of Copyrights. So yes, nothing changes. Copyright is still alive and well. This is not anything limiting copyright or anything changing the way the world works. Uh, it's AI that doesn't fit into the regime of copyright. We want to protect what people create. We're not trying to give people... Uh, a sudden gold rush of ownership over things computers generate, like domain names, which is, I uh, yes, I know they're not generated by computers, but you know there was that domain name rush in the in the '90s, and you know sort of continues to this day. And that's not how copyright works. Copyright is meant to protect people's creativity and to encourage them to make more things, not not to have computers do the million monkeys or infinite monkeys at infinite typewriters creating an infinite number of works and then going look we made everything we own it now and whoever's got the most power can create the most work can own the most things no nor is it bitcoin anyway so that's a good outcome we don't want people who either lie or withhold information on their copyright applications to be getting copyright registrations and then claiming that they own works that they didn't create entirely by themselves. You're supposed to disclaim those things, and if that, if Mr. Allen had simply disclaimed what the Copyright Office told him to disclaim, I think he would have the copyright that he was originally looking for. But maybe it wasn't about that. Maybe it was about trying to get one past the Copyright Office or somebody will claim that this is a new law or something anyway. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what I have for you today. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and um, I'll see you in the videos that drop.